Okay, welcome to our first video in our geometry unit on line shapes and solids. Our first video is just going to be going through some of the vocabulary associated with angles and looking at angles on a line and angles around a point. Before we get started, we're going to be introduced to someone who is really, really important in the world of mathematics, and that is the Greek mathematician Euclid. Euclid lived around 300 BC in Alexandria in Egypt, and he's often referred to as as the father of geometry and he's been given this name because of his uh, famous work which is called The Elements which was a series of 13 books that documents the geometry and number theory we use today in mathematics. Um, this sort of this work the 13 books wasn't just Euclid's work, it was lots of different mathemat mathematicians' work, so it wasn't always his original ideas, but he was the first person to document them in such a, such a systematic and organized way. Um, the most basic foundations his work is based on are on the five famous axioms, and I will uh, spell that for you, axioms. And an axiom is just a starting point or a postulate. Um, so yeah, just a fancy word for a starting point. So all of the geometry is based on these five axioms. So we're going to have a look at those first. Okay, the first axiom is that any two points can be joined by a straight line. So if we sort of were to draw that, we would say, okay, here's one point here and one point here. And of course, we can draw a straight line joining those two points. If I drew another two points... I can, of course, join those by a straight line. Okay, so pretty pretty obvious, I think, for us. Uh, the second one is the, uh, uh, sorry, the second axiom is any finite straight line. So a finite straight line is a line that goes from point to point. It ends there. It's finite. Um, any finite straight line can be extended in a straight line. So we could continue that straight line uh, to make a longer straight line. The third axiom is that a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius. So if this was my center and I said, okay, that's the radius, I can then draw a circle from that center and radius. And of course, I could have a different center. I could have this center over here and I could have this radius, that length. And again, I could draw another circle. Okay, axiom four is all right angles are equal to each other. So if I drew a right angle here and then I had another right angle here, they are of course equal because they're both 90 degrees. And the last axiom, this axiom gave uh, people quite a bit of trouble understanding uh, and it's been reworded several times. So we're gonna look at this version of it and that is given a line and a point not on the line. So let's draw what that means. Given a line, so we'll draw ourselves a line here and a point not on the line. So we'll take a point and place it anywhere, not on the line. The next bit says, there is only one line through the given point that does not go through the given line. So that means that there's, a, there's only one line that we could draw that doesn't actually intersect our first line, the red line. And that, so that axiom is actually just all about parallel lines, lines that don't meet. And we're gonna look at parallel lines a lot more closely in the next video. Okay, so before we talk about the different types of angles, we're just gonna go through the common way to name angles. So this angle you see here, we could call it angle B, very simply. Or you might see it labeled angled A, B, C, where we're always the, the letter sort of at the vertex or at the point of the angle is the one that's in between. Or we could call it angle C, B, A. These mean the same thing. Sometimes the angle might just be um, labeled with a small letter inside, and we would then just call that angle B or B degrees. Okay, so you'll, you'll see all of these uh, different ways to, to name angles, so you need to be familiar with those. Okay, we're going to look at six different types of angles, and these angles are classified according to their size. So you might already know some of these. You might want to try um, working them out on your own. If not, you can follow along here. So... Uh, this first blue angle, that is uh, an acute angle, and acute angles are between 0 and 90 degrees, that's the size of them. This angle here is a right angle, and a right angle is exactly 90 degrees, as we discussed in uh, Euclid's fourth axiom. This angle here is an obtuse angle, 
and an obtuse angle is between 90 and 180 degrees. Okay, this straight line, so if we label that angle there, that's a straight angle, and that is exactly 180 degrees. If we were looking at this angle outside, uh, that's called a reflex angle, and that is anywhere between 180 and 360 degrees. And then this, if we were to go all the way around, we call that a revolution, and that is exactly 360 degrees. So you can see from this that angles on a line add up to 180 degrees, that's an important point, and angles in around a point, okay, or a full, full circle is 360 degrees. Okay, we're going to look at some special pairs of angles. The first one we're going to look at are complementary angles, and complementary angles uh, sum to 90 degrees, so when you add them together you get 90 degrees. So have a look at the diagram above and see if you can work out uh, a pair of angles that are complementary. Okay, hopefully you see that B and C are complementary. So B and C equal 90 degrees, okay? And that's because B, C, and this right angle are all on a straight line. But if we look at, if that's a right angle there, then those other two have to also be a right angle because 90 and 90 is 180. Second type of angle we're gonna look at are supplementary angles. So supplementary angles, they sum to 180 degrees. Okay, and again, to see if you can find a pair of supplementary angles in that diagram. Hopefully you've seen, there's uh, two pairs you could have had. So A and B are supplementary because they're on a line, they're 180 degrees, or A and D, those are also supplementary, they're also on a line. And the third pair of angles we're gonna look at are vertically opposite angles. So if we have two lines that intersect each other, so for example, those two lines there, B and D, those are equal to each other and they're vertically opposite. So vertically opposite angles are equal and they're the ones that are opposite when you've got intersecting lines. So in this case, we would say that B is equal to whatever D is, they're the same size. Okay, compass bearings are often related to angles and we often give um, directions in terms of bearings. Uh, this is used sort of by pilots or ships in navigation. North is zero degrees. So you can see if we were to go from north and go clockwise all the way to east, we would be doing a quarter turn. So east is on a bearing of 90 degrees. So if we said we were walking on a bearing of 90 degrees, we'd be going directly east in our direction. South is 180 degrees, and west is 270 degrees. Okay, if we look at northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest, northeast is directly in between north and east, so it's exactly in between zero and 90 degrees, so northeast is on a bearing of 45 degrees. Southeast is again in between 90 and 180, so that would be at on a bearing of 135 degrees, and hopefully you've noticed I just need to add 45 onto 90. Again, from there to there is another 45 degrees, so southwest would be on a bearing of 225 degrees, and northwest would be on a bearing of 315 degrees. Right, we're just going to look at a couple problems here where we need to work out the size of angles that we're being asked for. So in this case, uh, in this first one, we need A and B. So A, you can see, makes a 90 degree angle with that 30 degrees we've been given. So we can say A plus 30 is equal to 90 degrees. So then A has to be 60 degrees. And the reason that we know this is because uh, A... A and the 30 degrees are supplementary angles. They add to 90 degrees. Okay, so when you work out these problems, it's always important that you give a reason for how you knew how to work them out. Okay, second angle there is B, and you can see that A and 30 degrees and B need to make a, a whole revolution, okay? So that whole circle there. So B is going to be uh, 
360 degrees, a whole revolution, minus A and 30. Well, we know A is 60, so minus 90 degrees. So B is equal to 270 degrees, and that's because we have angles that make a revolution. Okay, second example on this side, we've got um, A and B to work out. So in this case, you can see A and the 65 degrees make a straight line, so they have to add to 180. So then A is going to be 180 minus 65, which is 115 degrees. And that's because we have complementary angles. And then if we take a look at B, we could do B two different ways. But I think the easiest way, without any doing any calculations, is we can see that B and the 65 degrees are vertically opposite. So they're equal to each other. So B must be 65 degrees. And again, our reason is because we have vertically opposite angles. And the last thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at a bit of geometry and algebra. So we need to write an equation and solve it for x in the diagram. So these three angles here, they add up to 180 degrees because they're on a straight line. So the way we would write our equation is x plus 2x. So x is my first angle plus 2x plus my third angle x plus 10 must equal 180 degrees. And then I'm going to go ahead and solve that equation. So x plus 2x plus x gives me 4x plus 10 is equal to 180 degrees. And in order to solve for x, I need to take 10 away from each side. So I get 4x is equal to 170 degrees. And then I need to divide by 4 to work out what x is. And so I get x is equal to 42.5 degrees. Okay, so I can use this to work out the size of each angle here. So I'm just going to erase these marks. This first angle here, x is 42.5 degrees, obviously, because it's just x. The second angle here is 2 times x, so 2 times 42.5 degrees, which is 85 degrees. And the third angle here is x plus 10, so 42.5 plus 10 gives me 52.5 degrees. And there I've combined my knowledge of algebra with my knowledge of geometry to solve this problem. Okay, so that's the end of our, of our um, work on angles for this part of the chapter. Uh, please always remember that you do need to give a reason as to how you solve the problem. So in this case, we use the fact that we knew that angles on a straight line, angles on a straight line sum to 180 degrees, and we are able to use that to solve the problem.